We are furnished by our manners and habits, yet we can't see what they are. We can't knowingly possess our own ways. They tarry as a cadence in the body. Repeatedly, we reach to lift the curtain, the dictionary, the cup. This is a measure. Each gesture rhythmically completes itself with its object. We sometimes try to train our behaviors to fashion's apparent timeliness, but thankfully much escapes. Errant regards, approachings, groomings, greetings, compositions, and pettings hinge our rhythmic bodies to circumstance. Wood, beast, sleep, leather, textile, people. These hinged gleanings cast their material residue in our rooms. A room situates the cadence of habit. Propelled by this meter, we nevertheless glimpse or intuit the contrary shapes of potential browsing at the margins of our study. We pause, then nervously approach, as we might notice, then approach an attractive stranger we had felt watching us. I'm going to dream about another city inside us, where our past blows between buildings and scraps of old newspaper, and we jump from rooftop to rooftop like clouds pretending that anything could get in our way. You're going to love yourself, and I'm going to love myself, and we will be the endlessness of two mirrors facing one another. Freedom from habit extends to other bodies that penetrate this space. When she comes to see me, we can do almost nothing else except look at each other, remain standing while holding hands, lie down, or make love. The beauty of this singular experience, which could be called unfurnishing, makes me wonder why we force ourselves to furnish houses, why it is necessary to know our gender, know what sex attracts us. IKEA is the art of inhabiting what normative heterosexuality is to the desiring body. A table and a chair form a complementary couple that is not open to question. A wardrobe is a first certificate of private property. A bedside lamp is a marriage of convenience. A sofa facing the TV is a vaginal penetration. The curtain hanging from the window is the anti-pornographic censorship that looms when night falls. The other day, as we were making love in this empty house, she called me by my new name and said, the problem is our mind. Our minds fight, but our souls and bodies are in perfect harmony. A few minutes later, as my chest was opening up to breathe a few more atoms of oxygen, my cerebral cortex was taking on the consistency of cotton. I felt my body dissolving into the empty space and my mind, authoritarian and normative, almost dead, abdicating.